Welcome to our time of worship together today. What a great joy it is for us to be together to celebrate our continued journey through the season of Advent and we continue to, to embrace the lights of hope and peace and we continue to fill our hearts with the gift of Advent joy. Wherever we are, at home, at work, within our sanctuaries, come, let us celebrate the presence of God's joy in our midst. My church family, Christmas greetings to you in the name of the one who came to us as the Word made flesh, in the form of a baby born into lowly and humble beginnings. We recite through the Gospel of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's cryptic at best, but there's a reason we read the Gospels alongside the Hebrew Scriptures. Listen to the words of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, and who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices, and together they sing for joy. For in plain sight, they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people, and he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. We often associate the prophetic texts with dire warnings against our human fallibility and our worst individual and corporate character defects. But in this case, Isaiah is preaching a good news story, one of beauty, peace, good news, joy, comfort, redemption, vulnerability, and salvation. What could be a better news story in the arrival of the Christ child than remembering all that good news promised to us through our faith? Not that we get to those things because of our faith, just that our faith reminds us every year in the remembering of the coming of the Christ child that all things are made new or possible again, that God wishes us to have life and to have it in abundance. Sometimes it's hard to remember what the constant assault of bad news stories meant to keep us in a state of perpetual stress and believing the worst in each other. When in fact, all empirical evidence points to the opposite. Humans are generally decent and committed to the fabric of our societies and our social contracts with each other. That we are capable of great feats of innovation, kindness, overcoming obstacles, and achieving the impossible. We were born to achieve the impossible and not only in the absence of crisis, but even more strongly in times of crisis. So this year, when so much seems uncertain and the news amplifies all the hard news stories, remember that when the word is made flesh, there is one who came to show us that all the ends of the earth should see the salvation of God, and that through that one, we are capable of coming together to achieve the impossible. From the office of the moderator and on behalf of the United Church of Canada, I wish you the very merriest and most inspirational of Christmases. May you be the good news and see the good news and share the good news this Christmas season. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, Verses 1 to 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. 
say to those with a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God, who will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. God will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be opened. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. And sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word, thanks be to God. One of the joys of, of growing up in a smaller rural community was that there was always jobs that when you became a certain age, you performed. One of the things that I did, like my brother and my older sisters and several others in our community did, was to spend time mowing the local cemetery. It was just a small community cemetery, and I think there's four or five or six generations of my family buried within that cemetery. One of the things I learned there when doing it, and it was fortunate when we had a ride-on lawnmower in later years, as opposed just to the push lawnmower, was that you had to watch out for snakes. That was never one of the best parts of my job, of wandering around the cemetery and always keeping an eye out for snakes. You never knew when they were going to appear, when they were going to slither out from behind a tombstone or slither underneath one. I never forgot those times, and, and I can never enter into a cemetery without looking around and being very cautious of where I walk and, and what I might be stepping on. I was mindful of, of those days growing up and mowing the local cemetery in the little community where I grew up called Carsonville. I remembered it mostly when I moved to Saskatchewan in the year 2000. I've always discerned that a wonderful way to get to know a community was to visit the local cemeteries and just to wander around and look at the family names and perhaps some of the connections. And I remember when I first arrived in Saskatchewan in July of 2000, I visited one of the, the larger cemeteries close to the little prairie town where I lived. And I remember walking along, keeping mindful of what I'd experienced in New Brunswick being very tender walking through the cemetery. I was wearing shorts. I was wearing sandals. And so I was being very cautious in that moment of where I was going. And so I walked along and I was checking out some names, checking out some tombstones, and all of a sudden I felt something grab my toe. And I, well, I probably screamed. I probably shrieked. Good thing I was out in the middle of the broad prairies because no one could hear me. And I could look down and there was something on my toe. And I ran for the car and I shook my foot. And it wouldn't come off. Do you know what it was? It was a cactus. A small prairie cactus. Once I realized that it wasn't going to hurt me or bite me or infect me in any way, I calmed down a bit, and then I discovered throughout this cemetery were these small ground cactuses growing. And that wasn't the only surprise. I discovered cactus flowers blooming throughout that cemetery. 
amazing how something painful and as prickly as that could have such a beautiful, small blossom. And it brought me great joy. That surprise astounded me and filled my heart, and it continues to, to fill my heart these 22 some years later. And I never forget that surprise walking through that place, that surprise in the path that was offered to me. Joy. Joy comes to us in sometimes the most surprising and unsuspecting ways. And that's what the prophet Isaiah wanted to tell us. Be open to surprises. Be open to unsuspecting joys. Be open to the possibilities of what God is offering to you in your path. If we had everything planned out so well in our lives that we knew every twist and every turn and every obstacle that was coming before us, would we really be open? Open to the ways in which God is moving within us and the Spirit leading us? Hmm. I don't know. It's good to be planned, it's good to be organized, it's good to have things to look forward to, but if we are so structured that we don't allow flexibility, will we lose out on joy? Will we discover some things that bring us pleasure that, that are surprises? God doesn't want us to be so structured and tight in our lives that we miss out on some wonderful opportunities. And one of those opportunities might be great joy. To discover things that, that bring us up into the fullness of life and fill us up in ways that, that invigorate us and bring us enthusiasm and abundance. The prophet Isaiah was inspiring the people to be open to the ways in which God is moving among them and offering them glimpses of the divine, glimpses of the holy, glimpses of surprises that would invigorate them to be mindful of the ways in which God is calling among them and that God is vibrant among them, that God is with them. And that's what is for us on this Sunday of joy to remind us that God is still in our midst and that we need to be open to the surprises that God gives to us and more particularly, who and where those surprises might be. The prophet Isaiah inspired the people to be open to the presence of joy in their midst, to allow those things that seem impossible to become possible when we are open to the blessing and the movement of the Spirit. In this coming week, take a moment each day to name, identify, or observe something in your life that fills you with great joy. Something that makes you smile. Something that makes you happy. And if you're challenged with finding it, try to be that avenue of joy for others. Fill yourself with joy. Discover the joy and give thanks that, that, that we're filled in such a way that will make the lame dance, make the deaf hear, make those who have no voice be raised up to singing and proclaiming where deserts bloom, where mountains shall sing, where the glory of God can be celebrated. Live abundantly with joy and give thanks to God for the blessings in your life. Amen.
As we gather in this time of worship, we let all that is filling our hearts be our inspiration to guide us as we bring our hearts together as one community of faith. I invite you to join your heart with mine in prayer. Your spirit of unity, God, is a great gift for us to celebrate. You bless us with love, abundance, and joy each and every day. And that invigorates us as we live out our calling to be your messengers in the world, our communities, and within the daily circles of our lives each day. Thank you for blessing us in ways so that we may be a blessing to others. As we prepare our lives for the gift of your beloved child in the coming season of Christmas, we embrace these Advent days to reflect on how you, O oh God, inspire us. Inspire us to be an avenue to enrich the lives of others and in turn, enrich our own spirits each step of the Advent journey, drawing closer to you and you, O oh God, to us. We celebrate the communities in which we live with great joy and the diversity that is part of being a true community. We are a diverse people with varying backgrounds, beliefs, faith traditions, and life experiences. And so with joy, we acknowledge our diversity and celebrate true community. As followers of Jesus, we prepare to celebrate Christmas just as other faith traditions celebrate their special celebrations, holidays, and holy days. So we extend our blessings for a happy, blessed, and rich holiday season to all within our community. As we hold the entirety of our community, local and global, in our hearts, we offer into your tender care, O oh God, those who are in need of your loving attention, those being challenged by food insecurities, those struggling to make limited financial resources meet their needs, those living in the midst of war, chaos, oppression, and in the midst of disasters of either natural or human inspiration. We pray for those who are on a journey of grief and loss, fear and uncertainties, those struggling with medical issues and their challenges of the current medical system. The needs of many are abundant and our prayers are deep and heartfelt. We offer the prayers that we have into your tender care, O oh God. But we always find the courage within the strength that you give us and the inspiration that you offer to us within our hearts to be your vibrant and living examples of your love within our lives of others, in the world, and here within our community. In the spirit of joyful and hopeful expectation for the coming season of Christmas, we offer all that we have in prayers our thoughts, and the images that have been inspired within our minds to you, O oh God. We offer them to you in the name of the One, your blessed gift of true love, coming to us again this year. Amen. Throughout these Advent days, we have received God's abundant gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. As we have been blessed, May we be inspired to reach out, connect, and be a blessing to others with the sharing of our gifts. As we continue to move forward through our season of Advent, carry with you these flames, the light of hope, peace, and joy to illuminate your journey as you draw closer to Christmas. Amen.